Hello. Um, those are the two children that were murdered by their parents. Parent were parents. Um, the little girl, and this was obviously taken several years ago because the two in the middle are very small. But um, I, And I've seen it spelled a couple of different ways. The little girl, Malika, Malika, or Maliaka. So I'm not sure which one's correct because it's different depending on where you go to look. And Maurice, little Maurice Taylor Jr. Um, so the last we knew, there was supposed to be a court appearance on the 15th of February. I didn't hear anything. I contacted some local news outlets and, and sent messages and emails asking, you know, what happened in court and got nothing back. So I put my little brain to work last night and here's what I discovered. <clears throat> if anybody else would like to know this stuff, I do. And you know, if it works out that I can go to the courthouse, like I gotta do a little bit more digging to find out exactly where to go once I get to this courthouse. I've been there. Um, before and it is LA County it's an LA County uh, court system part of the LA County court system part of the LA County you know jurisdiction and all of that so once that clicked in my little brain I was able to do a little a little digging um, I did Natalie Brothwell first excuse me and Here's what I found, um, just in case you're, you're interested. Her arrest date was 10-14-2021, and I guess that LASD Metro detail, and she was booked the same day. Um, her bail is four million four million two hundred thousand. She's being housed at the Century Regional Detention Facility on Alameda Street in Linwood, California. It's a female facility. She is five feet two inches. She weighs 135 pounds, red hair, hazel eyes. She's charged with felony. She's 44. Birthday is January 20th, 1977. Her booking number is 6262778. Um, so her court dates, she has uh, three upcoming, two upcoming court dates. All right, and the case numbers are uh, start out, but the case there's a case number by the bail amount upcoming on february 23rd 2022 so she'll be in court for two two charges um i know that that uh the second case number on here the first two numbers are the year of the arrest and or the crime that was two zero I can't see the rest of it because it's start out but she is has a court date on the 23rd and then one March 25th so they're going to revisit the March 25th I, I imagine I can't even, I'm not even gonna guess because I'm gonna go to the courthouse and have them uh, decode everything because it's all start out but you know I have you can go as as a concerned citizen and and get some records get some court information um, so that's that's what I'm gonna do like the next time I'm down there I'm gonna try and do that and let's see, what else did I discover? Yeah. 
booking number, date of birth, and where she's housed, Linwood. And um, <laughs> so yeah, so there's I looked up like access to like what's going on in the courthouse, how to break down case numbers and stuff like that, but I don't really have anything solid to go with on that. Um, and so next up, Maurice Taylor Sr., the physical, I've, I've heard him referred to as a physical therapist working out of a Santa Monica office, and I've heard of him being referred to as a personal trainer out of Santa Monica, but either way, at the time of these murders, he was, he was working from home out of Zoom. And, and we talked before about like what some of his clients had reported. He was 10 years younger than Natalie. Um, I don't know what she did for a living. I found some stuff uh, digging around, but I am not sure that that's her. It looks like all of their social media has been wiped out, uh, even him as his professional. But I'm gonna do more, more searching. I'm gonna do more digging. So Maurice Taylor is five foot ten, weighs one hundred and fifty pounds. Um, he's thirty four. His birthday is August twenty six, nineteen eighty six. His booking number is six zero six four one nine six. Arrest date twelve o four twenty twenty. Um, and he is being housed at Twin Towers down in L.A. Been there many times to visit. Um, not him. I mean, like years ago to visit. So he also has court dates, but he also has case numbers. He has one, two, three, four, five. Some of these old case numbers, I'm going to try to go down there and get electronic records. Uh, one was February 9th, 2021, which was a few months after his arrest, probably his first court appearance. Appearance And his case number his started with a CK, and then there were two digits, or two other, but they're, they're uh, start out. And then the same, like, case number 20, and those are the, that's for the, the year. I know that, but the rest I can't see. And that was April 8th, 2021. Maybe that one, I know one of those was maybe the competency hearing, but then he has, he's going to also be seen on the 23rd of February for the same two uh, type of cases that Natalie uh, Brothwell is also going to be, to be seen for. And then on March 25th, same uh, type of case he will be in court again with her for something else and then he has two other case numbers that start with an NO and then a it start out and then a ZM start out and there's no date listed uh, by that so I don't know if those are competency hearings um, but there is a way to decipher those and when the case is upcoming, it says there's a section on here that says next uh, court date. So the next court code is A11, and I know A stands for where the court, what court, and then 11 is the level of uh, the case or something like that. It's February 23rd, 0800, and the court case is, is spelled out in full. Uh, MA0803351. And I think the 01 at the end is for if there's other people involved in this. And the 01 would be there's one other person involved in this particular court case. Um, and then, you know, where it takes place and all of that. So. Maybe after the court case on the 23rd, 
we'll get the full case number for the other up and the court case in March, which has the year, you know, which is the actual. Anyway, it's confusing. It can be very confusing. Um, I know when my friend uh, was arrested and he was taken to Twin Towers, and then. And then I also did try to get some electronic data on these these previously uh, previous court visits, and you know you got to pay for it, and I was willing to do that, but it kept kicking me out saying my I was timed out. So I'm going to go to the courthouse and ask to look at. I can go and see the papers or the electronic court records. Um. And I should be not really have too much of a problem with, I think, our mask mandate, but I'm still going to wear my mask for a little while. I don't know if I feel secure enough to go without it just yet. Um, so that's, that's all I have. And I know that... Um, so I don't know how it got reported that it was the 15th. I think news, eight, the local news were reporting the 15th. They would be back in court. And so I was just waiting for information. But, you know, I know how to go and get some information from L.A. County. The rest, other counties, I'm not, I'm not so sure with. But I can go into L.A. County and find stuff like this. And then I know where this courthouse is. So I'm going to take a trip down there and, you know, see how much information I can get. It's not as easy, I guess, without any kind of uh, media credentials. I think they may look at me like, what do you want to know this for? I'm just a private citizen who's concerned and I want to know, right? Um, but that's that's all I have. I have a, did find a couple pictures of Maurice Taylor Sr. Um, let me put, I'm going to put those right here. So there's a few there. Um, with her, though, not so much. Like I said, I searched all social media. You know, if you don't grab that when you first hear about a case, chances are it gets, you know, it, they shut down their social media. Or they're advised to shut down their media, their social media. And so there's really nothing to... I even looked for the kids to see if they had... But they... They may have accounts on other social media that I don't use, and so I'll, I'll just have my daughter help me out with that. Um, but anyway, I just to sh I really just wanted to share what I had found, and you know, all, if all things uh, work out, I will go down to the courthouse. You know, gas is like crazy out here; the prices for gas, and so I conserve and I put all of my visits in one day, so I'm not going different places, you know, being on a fixed income. I don't have that luxury of expecting money to come in mid month or whatever. So I have to be very careful how I, how I drive around these days. Um, but I really want to be there on the 23rd. I may try to go down there earlier to get to kind of clarify some information that I just shared with you as far as court cases and court numbers and where in the courthouse and all of that so I can prepare to be there on the 23rd. So what is going to happen on the 23rd? I have no idea. Um, but I think if I go there, I could probably find some information. I just hope the people down there are pleasant to deal with and not snarky. I've been... I've been to other courthouses to try to find information out in the past uh, without media credentials, and they just don't cooperate. 
You know, they just don't want to cooperate with you to help you out. Sorry for the sniff. But that's it for, for them. I just wanted to clear up those dates. And I am going to do keep digging. I'm going to see what I what else I can find out on these two, especially her. There's very little to go on. It's like she has wiped clean, you know, any. But I still have a couple other angles. I still have a couple other ways to go about finding information about her. And so I'm going to do that. And if I find anything, um, I'll let you know. If I make it to the courthouse, of course, I'll let you know. And um, I'll probably take pictures of the courthouse. You're not allowed to take your cell phones in, I don't think. And so, um, and then just pay for copies of any kind of paper information I find out or try to memorize it, take notes. I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. And that's it. Uh, I hope, um, oh, I found this clip from Gascon. And I wanted to insert that here too. I took a snip and I just reacted badly to it. So let me just, uh, I'm going to insert that here. So I found this to be sad and interesting at the same time. Um, this was an early article, but he's quoted in current articles too, but the murder charges against Taylor do not include special circumstances, allegations that could have made him eligible for the death penalty or life in prison without the possibility of parole. The district attorney said he has heard about the hue and cry about how the filing decision may somehow provide less safety for a community in the case, which this was quoted in a current article too that I had already talked about, but I felt feel like some of this was not included. And he says, what would be the utility to take somebody that is probably going to spend the rest of his life in prison to continue to add years and waste taxpayers money on additional litigation? He asked, this is the part that wasn't, isn't re repeated in current articles. Some judges have refused to dismiss allegations that could lead to stricter sentences, but the DA's office has the option to amend complaints to eliminate enhancements administratively. As judges, prosecutors, and victims of crime spoke out against or refused to comply with Gascon's change in policy, the new DA met with members of the community. On Friday, he issued a letter saying he would allow prosecutors to seek enhancements in crimes involving children, elderly victims, or victims targeted because of race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, sexual orientation, gender, or mental or physical disability. However, Gascon continued to insist that enhancements are not in the interest of justice and are a principal driver of mass incarceration. Pointing to research indicating that those who serve excessive sentences are more likely to commit new crimes, the district attorney reiterated his commitment to eliminate gang and dozens of other enhancements. What is wrong with this guy? This is a crime against children. Two children were murdered. Two other children are probably permanently damaged and it falls into your own criteria of enhancements and crimes, which can call for the death penalty, which can call for life in prison without parole. But he's going against himself and saying it's a waste of taxpayers' money and it leads to mass incarceration. Like, what an idiot. Am I wrong? Does this not sound like this guy is talking out of both sides of his mouth? Like, I wonder sometimes how a person's brain disassociates like that, saying he's going to stick to his guns and say this is just another way of 
you know, we're going to put these two people in prison, mass incarceration. That is not what people talk about when they say mass incarceration. That is not what is all being talked about. When people address mass incarceration, it is not stuff like this. When they talk about mass incarceration, it's it's all of those men and women who are stuffed in jails with exorbitant uh, years, charge tacked on years because uh, they were caught with marijuana, they were they were caught with what they uh, a certain amount of marijuana with intent to sell, you know. Uh, I mean, the mass incarceration uh, subject has nothing to do with parents killing their children. I don't know why, where his disconnect is coming from, why he's insisting that these ex extra charges are these extra uh, circumstances, these enhancements are are part of the problem with mass incarceration when this is a murder charge against children not only just murder but the brutality the near nature of it these two decapitated their children made the other two look at it stare at it starve their other children and you're going to stand by you're not going after them Locked and loaded? You're not going after them? Guns blazing? I just don't get it. I don't get it. So, um, it enrages me. It enrages me that this is going on with these two. And, you know, still to this, like the most current articles do not include this about the judges refusing to dismiss the allegations that could lead to stricter uh, sentencing. So good on them. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that is what I bring to you today. Um, I feel the need to stay on this. I uh, don't want these two, these four kids to be lost in the shuffle and forgotten as if, you know, like we have so many missing children and crimes against children that uh, they may get a little bit of limelight and they may be in the media for a minute and then we never hear again. So I don't want that to happen to any of them. But this one, the courthouse is fairly close to me, uh, familiar with the LA County court system a little bit more than other than others um so we'll see what happens from here on let me know what you think about our our da's comments and it's just maddening i feel like my blood pressure just shot up like i could faint it, it really is it's really awful excuse me anyway um i will be back when new information uh is uncovered or if I hear anything else. All right. Have a, if you have watched this, thank you. Um, let me know what you think. And if you have any other information, pictures of this Natalie Brothwell, if you were one of those who did some digging into her before all social media was shut down, um, I'd like to know, well, I'm going to do some digging too, but if you already know like what she did for a living, uh, what her life was like before these two met. Um, I don't think they were married, but she may have just kept her maiden name. Um, anyway, that's all. Have a, have a good day. Uh, stay safe. And uh, uh, until next time.